Don in London. Hello, it's June 23rd. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Wanting to be with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things. So these days, just one day at a time, staying sober and seeing how life can turn out just for today. So my video is all about recovery and what helped me along the way well family friends community professionals medical people who had an idea about what addiction is and that's the inability to stop drinking in my case alcohol and the same with my behavior trying trying very hard to be perfect and never so but certainly trying to fit in and try to be included in what was going on so now one day at a time, with the help of family, friends, community, professionals, I keep well, and sustain it with the help of a fellowship, and that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I never speak for AA, no one can. It's full of unique, authentic people who speak where they will for themselves, and that's a personal choice. There are no rules, laws, or regulations in AA. It's all about freedom of choice to be ourselves as we learn who we are. So by the end of today I'll know a little bit more about who I am. In this video it, I'm covering a few thoughts for today and also the daily reflections follows and other years and also the step six reading from the 12 traditions and 12 steps of AA. So quite a lot in here. Always switch off when you've had enough or you've got a bit of wisdom which might help you. Or you might say, that's not for me, which is even better because then you're making free choices. So my thoughts for today, and it's all about trust really, trusting others, which is part of the Daily Reflections reading from the AA book, Daily Reflections. And the month of June is all about step six. So these are the thoughts I had today and also from previous years too. If we expect others to be as we wish, rather than the way they are, our expectations will never be met. So we might wish people to be a certain way, but they're not. Assuming people have the same outlook and values will cause, cause us resentment if our expect expectations are they will be a certain way. Better to ask rather than expect, find common ground and avoid resentments under construction. And one of the things we know in the fellowship, we can't afford to remain angry and resentful at people, places and things, because that will be a start of a, a relapse process most often. Certainly relapse into old behaviour, where we think the world's against us, and why can't those people be the way they're supposed to be? And of course they can't be. They can only be the way they are today. So even, on, even when their behaviour is their worst, it may be the best they can be just in that one moment. And the same applies to us, of course. It's not just one way. Going on, if only, wishful thinking, if only it was this way. Our expectations of how others will treat us mean we will feel let down often. So if we don't actually understand where a person's coming from, the likelihood is they'll let us down. Who indeed can maintain our standards? As we judge others, they too judge what we do. We cannot control outcomes. We can improve them through our choices and actions today. And the problem with the 12 steps, which is a, a process and print set of principles, we can judge people harshly with them, rather than actually work on what's needed to be changed in us on a daily basis. So it's easy to use the self-appraisal system of the 12 steps, our toolkit, not only to improve our behaviour, but also it makes us able to judge the behaviour of other people. And the only thing we can do is negotiate and contract and understand boundaries better by talking it through with another person. Going on again, trusting others, let go our fear of vulnerability or letting go our fear of vulnerability opens the door to being open, honest and willing to share the truth. We need to love, be loved and feel useful, included. As we trust to truth, others may entrust their truth with us. Not always, sometimes never, 
when trust happens it works so we may have an expectation that as we become more open honest and willing to live life to truth love and wisdom doesn't that necessarily mean everybody's going to start doing the same thing trust comes with time and one of the things one of our defects in step six is often impatience intolerance and disposing of people in a superficial and, and indifferent way without learning how to cherish them and understand them we're not going to like everybody in this world and that's just the way it is and not everybody's going to like us either they have no time and are just too different maybe but we don't have to be indifferent we can be respectful and withdraw and we can have a complete conversation in our heads which leads to good outcomes and co conclusions we often do this we have a, an idea of how it should be and intuitively we know how the, the outcome should be but it doesn't work out that way when we share our needs and, and, and desires others can be confused they're playing catch up with our ideas and often what seems obvious to us is impossible to fathom by those around us so we all think slightly differently and we're all in different places emotionally and in terms of what we have to do today so to get our agenda out there we have to discuss it rather than expect that people will understand obviously what we're talking about and I'm capable of doing that very often and of course romance and finance two areas where in recovery we can come a cropper very easy or fall down in heartbroken heaps yes romance where we have deep feelings for another and then and the person we desire and hope to love does not feel the same way how often does that happen well as many times as it can until we find maybe a soulmate yes this happens often and we forget we need to grow our relationships so although we might desire somebody see them hear them and even acknowledge them and then work out in our heads we want to love them and be with them they may have no clue or idea what we are about so we have to do all the groundwork always many of us fall head over heels in love and are surprised and shocked when the person we desire has no idea and the same applies as another may love us and see a partnership develop and we have no clue so as much as we might be heartbroken we might be breaking hearts without even realizing it this is how it is humans need to talk to each other in order to find out what's going on and that requires a certain amount of trust in our own being who we are because we will be accepted as much as we are rejected in life people will either like us or not like us it's just the way life is but we don't have to follow and be prejudiced against other people all we need to do is leave people alone if they want to be left alone and there may be a bit of hurt there but soonest known soonest mended so if we carry a torch to somebody and don't tell them and then suddenly we declare after a certain amount of time that we feel we ought to be with them and they haven't even thought about it then yes a recipe for disaster and hurtfulness and finance where we have a great idea or think we might be right for a particular job as we forget our great idea may come to nothing if, nothers, if others cannot follow and the great idea could be absolutely spectacular but unless we actually get acceptance of it and can come I suppose collaboration is the word I was looking for then it will come to naught and for every job we think we can do we are not the only ones so we have to recognize competition which gets harder as time goes on in all, in all aspects of finance and employment transparency is needed to find the right job at the right time with the right people and sometimes we have no choice right now but to accept what we can do and what we can't do we need build a future starting today so we can put the foundation stones in but you know that there is an awful lot of luck or happenstance is where we are are we in the right place with the right people with the right things and often what we need to do is put the foundations in so that we can be ready ready to be employable or to share the next big idea not easy when our default position might be how dare they not follow what I'm saying 
well how do they not want to be involved the answer is why should they and the answer is they shouldn't we have to be equal to whatever it is we're up to and the best way to do that is to learn life each and every day open honest and willing to trust love and learn a bit of wisdom not easy in a very difficult world where we don't know what's going on in the minds of other people yes life goes on and we need understand that we'll, there will be hard knocks and disappointments but whatever we do we can cherish always the journey and the foundations and even the outcomes which are success, successful and we may never know what it is that we end up with if we don't keep our eyes and our senses open to the possibilities around us I would never have thought I would be where I am today not in a million years and these days I don't look back wonder and wonder why I'm where I am I'm alive another day and another set of opportunities now follows the daily reflections and other years and step six Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour, well, as extreme. Workaholic, relationships, people, places, things, collecting, fixing. Never quite happy, never quite comfortable with life. Uh, here I share daily reflections from AA in this book. One page a day to help us, and it covers the 12 steps and 12 traditions. And for today, June 23rd, it says, trusting others. But does trust require that we be blind to other people's motives or indeed to our own? Not at all. This would be folly. Most certainly, we should, we should assess the capacity for harm as well as the capability for good in every person that we, should trust, we would trust. Such a private inventory can reveal the degree of confidence we should extend in any given situation. In other words, we learn life and experience life and we learn who to trust and who may be not so trustworthy given where they are and their circumstances. It goes on to say, I am not a victim of others but rather a victim of my expectations, choices and dishonesty. So in other words if my expect expectations are high, my choices are not right and I'm dishonest with myself, I'm in trouble. When I expect others to be what I want them to be and not who they are, in other words, judging them by my own standards, and they're not there. Either they're beyond me and better, or less, maybe. I need to be careful about just looking at my behaviour. Then they fail to meet my expectations, and I am hurt. When my choices are based on self-centeredness, I find I'm lonely and distrustful. I gain confidence in myself, however, when I practice honesty in all my affairs. When I search my motives, and I'm honest and trusting, I'm aware of the capacity for harm in situations and can avoid those that, that are harmful. So in other words we get to trust our own judgment and if we're not certain about it we ask somebody in fellowship or somebody we trust so we don't make it just a self-centered point of view. And what helps me on a daily basis when things are good or bad? The serenity prayer to God or good conscience as you choose or come to, put, come to understand. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is just for me one day. Don in London, hello, and it's June 23rd, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour or addiction to both substance and behaviour my substance was alcohol and my behaviour drinking a lot if I wasn't drinking a lot I'd be in a relationship a lot uh, workaholic you name it any old olive and the gift these days is to know I can find balance in this one day so progress not perfection always and it struck me over the last week or two <coughs> 
if only, I think is the way to describe this video, if only people were like me. And thank God they're not, because I'm full of defects of character. And uh, June is all about step six for me. Having my defects of character removed on a daily basis. And my, my main defects, if you like, are fear, putting on a brave face, and ego. So if my ego comes out to play, I'm probably indignant and actually judging people. If I fear life, it means there is something nagging at me which I'm not sure about, and I wonder if I've done something wrong or somebody is doing something wrong to me, or indeed just simply being themselves but at the same time angry at me. So these things happen, and you know, this happens on YouTube too. So if only people had the same outlook as me, if only they would treat people or they would treat me as I would treat them and uh, we're asking for sometimes impossible standards of ourselves and other people. I'm going to have to shut my window, there's a bit, bit of a row. I'll be right back, I'm back. So, the if only bit. Anyway, coming on to what keeps me sober for day to time is the fellowship. Um, actually, before the fellowship, family, community, society, professionals and the fellowship keep me sober a day to time. And uh, the fellowship I'm talking about, obviously for me, is Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, I don't speak for Alcoholics Anonymous, it's full of unique authentic people who can speak for themselves on subjects they wish to speak about and also in privacy or wherever they like. But I share a public record, if you like, about sobriety because it helps me keep in the moment of now. And uh, this thing about if only, if only the world was the way I would like it to be. And of course it's not. And you know, how often is it that we... Uh, we cannot get what we want or our choices are limited to what we are able to do. So on a daily basis my choice is not to drink and to go to fellowship meetings which help me. So if one hour or one and a half hours a day keeps me away from the demon drink which got me drinking 24-7 that's not so bad and I don't spend all my time in meetings. I spend my time as best I can to do something useful besides doing AA videos or videos about AA. So I don't speak for the fellowship, I can't. It's not that sort of thing. It's a fellowship of unique authentic people and uh, unique authentic people can do what they wish to do wherever they are. So the preamble shared at every meeting of AA sort of sums it up. It says this, and this always slows me down. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So part of my usefulness is just sharing that uh, there is a fellowship out there if you want to stop drinking. And also there are good professional medical people and good people who have an understanding of what alcohol has done, what, what addiction is, and how to develop a life of recovery. Because once we've crossed the line on something, we can be quite easily cr cross addicted into our work, as I say, uh, relationships, uh, you name it, we can cross addict into it. Any old behaviour you can think of, or experience, I guess. So, yeah, it's not easy being in recovery. And I can make it ten times worse simply by sometimes having expectations which cannot be met. And uh, my coffee nearly went down the wrong way there. Yes, in this book, Daily Reflections, it's a page a day all about what we might want to consider and reflect about, a meditation if you like, just to get a bit of a, an edge on what we might do today to keep calm and in the moment of now, which is reality. Being in reality is far better than living in our history and having a mindful of desperate times or going to the future and wishing it was something else. But it says here about trusting others, and uh, trusting others it says this. But does trust require that we be blind to other people's motives, or indeed to our own? Not at all. This would be folly. Most certainly we should, ask, we should assess the capacity for harm, as well as the capability for good, in every person that we would trust. Such a private inventory can reveal the degree of confidence we should extend in any given situation. 
So in other words, don't expect really that people will treat us the way we want to treat people. And also remember that we have treated people badly in the past, either by our absence or by our ignorance under the influence. It goes on to say, I am not a, not a victim of others, but rather a victim of my expectations, choices and dishonesty. So my expectations, choices and dishonesty. Good words. When I expect others to be what I want them to be, and not who they are, when they fail to meet my expectations, I am hurt. When my choices are based on self-centeredness, I find I am lonely and distrustful. I gain confidence in myself, however, when I practice honesty in all my affairs. When I search my motives and am honest and trusting, I am aware of the capacity for harm in situations and can avoid those that are harmful. So it's all also, you know, harm is real and uh, you know it's not imagined and these books are quite serious and we can do a lot of harm sometimes when we think we're talking truth and in fact we're talking opinion how often have I done that well you know what it's called yes I think it's called what did, what did somebody say yes an exponent of the selective truth the selective truth can be completely dishonest and a lie and I was good at that because it was just the way the game was played so you know it's better to be honest and open and willing I guess on a daily basis but don't expect the same back so page 134 in As Bill Sees It similar sort of message I wonder why these things come together like this the individual rights we believe there isn't a fellowship on earth which devotes more care to ind its individual members surely there is none which more jealously guards the individual's right to think talk and act as he wishes no AA can compel another to do anything. Nobody can be punished or expelled. Our 12 steps to recovery are suggestions. The 12 traditions which guarantee AA's unity comes not a single, con contains not a single don't. They repeatedly say, we ought, but never you must. Though it is traditional that our fellowship may not coerce anybody, let us not suppose even for an instant that there are, there are not under they are not under that we are not under constraint indeed we are under enormous coercion the kind that comes in bottles our former former tyrant king alcohol always stands ready again to clutch us to him therefore freedom from alcohol is the great must that has to be achieved or else we go mad or die and that's so true but this thing about you know under enormous coercion by alcohol sometimes we're under enormous coercion by the judgments and prejudice we've built up over the years and often our expectations of others um, it's like if you ask the question if I were if, how do I want to be treated today and the answer is probably the way I would treat other people if we're mean and nasty and unpleasant or we have a demeanor which is quite arrogant and egotistical then we probably get the same back so I try to keep, keep open honest and willing and understand that I can get judgmental and this can be extremely unhelpful and offer, sometimes offer advice or information which has been asked for when in fact it might have been better to keep silence and say I just don't know so it's difficult and you know we're all human and we go through angry periods in our life and also gentler and more calm and peaceful parts of life and it's all according to how life is today so when I say the serenity prayer either to God or good conscience or a higher power it's as we choose God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change that's other people, places and things courage to change the thing I can that's me, my attitude and behaviour and the wisdom to know the difference always and forever just in the day where reality exists and it's our spiritual connection to just now. Don in London, good morning, and it's Monday, the 23rd of June, 2008, and uh, a good weekend for me. I think it's been a good weekend, it's been a bit topsy-turvy and uh, I felt a bit out of sorts on Saturday and then sort of rallied yesterday being in good company and uh, we learn a lot in recovery and I guess I learn a lot every day just about how to live 
simply in the day, one day at a time. And I've learned this because I go to a fellowship for recovery from alcohol addiction, and that's Alcoholics Anonymous. And the preamble for AA said at every meeting, so it gives some context to these videos. It says, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution and does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And uh, sometimes I wonder what sobriety is, and it's not just not drinking. It's actually finding life and uh, being a part of life, living in this very present moment, one day at a time. And AA is really all about emotional, spiritual and physical. It's got nothing to do with the materialistic world at all, although many people benefit simply being able to deal with material issues as they get their emotional, spiritual and physical well-being back. So we don't become rich in any sort of materialistic sense. Some people do, but that's just the way life is. And it's still a competitive world when it comes to what we might do and what we don't do. There's a, a text for me, I'll leave that for now. Um, and what I was thinking about over the weekend, it's got to do with, you know, when we're feeling okay, we are our most natural type of personality. And my na most natural type of personality, personality type that I am, as Jung, Carl Jung would de describe it, is to be extrovert, intuitive, feeling. That is, uh, I, like the, I like the world to impact on me, and I'm energized by the world, and uh, I deal with situations hopefully intuitively as my most preferred way, and I, I, I have a very high sense of feelings about what is happening and sensitive to what people are facing. And that's how I like to be. But the truth is, we are all the different types of personality that we can encounter out there in real life. And when life is going well, I'm extrovert, intuitive, feeling type. And when my world is very difficult, or my depression is about, I tend to go introverted into a sensing mode and try and think my way through. And, you know, neither way is right or wrong. It's just which what, what has worked for us best is what we're most able to do. So me, I'm more able to be extrovert, intuitive feeling. And when the, when the, uh, the depression or big issues hit, I tend to go introverted, sensing thinking, just trying to find out what on earth is going on. And the gift is that some people are introverted, sensing thinking types as their dominant way of being, and then uh, have as a less preferred way, trying to be extrovert, intuitive and feeling. So. We all have the balance in all of this, and what Jung said was, we have a particular personality type from a very early age, and then we develop the other side of our personality as time goes by, and we need that flexibility to operate in different ways depending on the circumstances. But uh, I know I have been one way most of my life, and now I've learned also the gift of trying to develop my introverted sense of thinking sounds a bit balmy, doesn't it? It sounds quite hard to explain. But uh, in practical terms, what it means for me is if I'm sharing and out there and using my feelings, life is easier for me. But when I have to try and work it out on my own because some, some, some big issue or something is pulling me down, I have to rely on my lesser way of dealing with life, looking inwards and using my sensing processes and trying to apply logic. So maybe we're all the same in this, we have the best of one way and the least of another. And when we're trying to work things out and our best way doesn't work, then we go back to revert back to a very awkward way. And it's, it was once described to me that uh, we have a preferred way of writing style with either our left hand or our right hand. And then when we try and use the opposite hand, uh, it's very peculiar, very jittery and very awkward. So that's where we are with personality in many ways and uh, when we're caught in the grip of our less preferred way that was me when I was drinking being introverted sensing thinking not making any sense of anything and drinking to destruction 
that's what happened to me and it's called caught in the grip of our lesser preferred way so you know psychology is useful and it actually applies to real life and I think you know over the last two days on Saturday I was more in the introverted side trying to work through some issues which I didn't really know the answers to and only when I uh, was in company uh, did I start to make sense of it by putting it out there and sharing so I learn each day that you know we are complicated people with simple solutions if we get out there and have a bit of company and I guess why I'm so struck on AA it gave him Al Alcoholics Anonymous it gave me about my choices so these are the daily readings for today which, are today, which seem quite pertinent daily reflections today it says on June 23rd trusting others but does trust require that we be blind to other people's motives in, or indeed our own not at all this would be folly most certainly we would uh, we would we should assess the capacity for harm as well as the capacity capability for good in every person that we would trust such a private inventory can reveal the degree of confidence we should extend in any given situation that comes from as bill seated page 144 and it goes on to say I am not a victim of others, but rather a victim of my expectations, choices and dishonesty. dishonesty. When I expect others to be what I want them to be, and not who they are, when they fail to meet my expectations, I am hurt. When my choices are based on self-sensedness, I, I find I am lonely and distrustful. I gain confidence in myself, however, when I practice honesty in all my affairs. When I search my motives and am honest and trusting, I am aware of the capacity for harm in situations and can avoid those that are harmful and when we learn to trust others based on the evidence that's before us then we are making progress and we can share and develop our understanding of life and our own identity and as Bill sees it this is not uh, particularly for this day but it's just linearly how it falls out of the book for me page 178 down to earth those of us who have spent much time in the world of spiritual make-believe have eventually seen the childishness of it. But this dream world has been replaced by a great sense of purpose, accompanied by a growing consciousness of the power of God in our lives, or good conscience. We have come to believe he would like, like us to keep our hands in the clouds with him, but that our, feet, that our feet ought to be firmly planted on the earth. That is where our fellow travellers are, and that is where our work must be done. These are the realities for us. We have found nothing incompatible between a powerful spiritual experience and a life of sane and happy usefulness. And for me, the spiritual connection is always in the moment of now. This is just my interpretation of it. And that life works best if I am best able to see the reality as it is. So sometimes I do have my head in the clouds and uh, full of happiness, but my feet need to be firmly on the ground so I may deal with whatever is coming my way. And the 24-hour day book, which is not AA, but it is written by an AA person, says, No chain is, is stronger than the weakest link. Likewise, if you fail in the day-by-day day day program, in all probabil probability it will be at your weakest point. Great faith and constant contact with God's power, or good conscience in my case, can help you discover, guard and under, undergird your weakest point with a strength not of your own. Intelligent faith in God's power can be counted on you, on to help you, you master your emotions, help you, help you to think kindly of others, and help you with any task you might undertake, no matter how difficult. Am I master of my emotions? And actually, uh, probably powerless over my emotions is how I feel most of the time. And then understanding them is the next step. So there we are. Uh, a bit about caught in the grip. And this morning I feel more outward looking than inward looking, so that's a good start. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. 
live in the day, live in the moment, find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship. That fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone, I guess, of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 traditions in fellowship, unity, service and recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June for me is all about step six. So I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready, or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets? Or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to, the, in the biblical sense, the seven deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet, you'll find many a version, and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so, pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities. It interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin, or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities, or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. 
Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins, humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one is going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you, which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilized. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions Remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. He was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self-will will run riot and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices. If God works through people, the wisdom came quick and easy for me. So I stuck around for quite a while, shivering with, with fear another one of my defects, until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people, and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober 
AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence, so working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike a bull suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose, and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control, as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be an addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self-will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness 
in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that can we, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done but well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralysed by sloth of course most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels we who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves yet can we after all hasn't it been self-interest pure and simple that has enabled us, most of us to escape not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects then where do we stand and this is where it's about you and your you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be what we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects we really love them who for example doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow or even quite a lot superior isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition to think of liking lust seems impossible but how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds and even while staying within conventional bounds many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance indeed we can talk ourselves into anything I know this, I've done it self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable in a perverse way we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority gossip barbed with our anger and I'm right, I'm smiling there because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not? rather than working for it or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have 
instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it. And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for procrastination which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these and few of us would, be ser would seriously think of giving them up at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up Let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. 
maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous, and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because, you know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often, that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows. Yeah. Humility against pride. Kindness against envy. Abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. And step six, the seven deadly sins or removal of them, is subject to asking on a daily basis, how am I going to live today? How do I want to behave? How do I want to be open, honest and willing to change my attitude and behaviour to fit my circumstances? And do my feelings fit my life right now? If we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose, then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily. And also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? And if I feel okay, given my current situation, if my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or well my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? And that's not to actually analyse to death. How am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point. I don't know how I feel right now. Why? Because I haven't given it a second thought. What can I do? Consider my options today. Or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful, or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do, then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence. And I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being. Not necessarily in fellowship, but somebody who I love and loves me back. 
and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear, brave facing and ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.